Roll call, please, Kathy. Henry Quant. Here. Dick Anderson. Here. Gordon Nagleton. Gary Ellingson. Here. Catherine Marikas. Here. Roger Sprague. Here. And Alex Ward. Here. First order, is there any comments from citizens present? If there's no comments from citizens present, um, next item is minutes of meeting. We have before you the minutes of, minutes of June the 25th. Are there any corrections? Or if not, can I have a motion to approve them? I've got a correction, Mr. Chair, on uh, item number six. I have my, and it's up in front of me. Mr. Olson. Found field site. Found field that, That's just point of order. I can check with Kurt on that and okay. we can come bring these back. Do you want to or just make the correction because it seems like the only thing missing is who presented the award information and if that that's fine that's fine yes sir. so uh, I'd make a motion to approve the uh, minutes um, second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. all those opposed Okay, next item is special order of business. Uh, the first item is Faith Community Service Lease. David Hawker. Uh, they've asked for um, a six month extension at no rent with the um, information that they would discontinue operations at that time. Would you, would you say that last part? They only intend to operate another six months, and then they um, want to give it up. Mr. Chairman, uh, Jim Stanley is in the uh, audience. We could bring him up for questions, any specific questions uh, might have in exchange. If that would be helpful. Does anybody have any questions? I'm curious as to why this Let's House is deciding to close. Come on up, Jim. Don't, yeah, yeah. don't try to talk from there or there. Good afternoon. Uh, not the Celeste's house per se. Okay. We were looking to expand, and, and we we're looking for a larger facility. <coughs> uh, and, and in order to, uh, to do that, uh, we're trying to conserve as much money as possible uh, for our budget in order to provide such a facility uh, for the future. But the, the actual uh, establishment itself in terms of our program will continue. Okay. Yeah. I'm that. sorry, I was not aware of that. I'm sorry, I, I, we, we had a conversation that maybe I mis, misled you in some kind of comments. But um, because we're getting to that point with the house where it, you know, it, it, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been wonderful for us and everything you've done for us in terms of providing the rent and low rent, it's, uh, it's, uh, we need a larger facility. It's in a little bit different layout as well. Yeah. And I, I think if I can, uh, Stanley, in the conversation you and I had, too, the, the reason for the um, request for no rent is uh, because of there still would be some repairs needed to kind of keep it in shape until January. Um, and we both hate putting uh, money into a mm -hmm. facility that we're going to walk away from. So uh, this that was one correct. way. Right. This was one way to allow you to use your budget to... We have a continuing problem with the with the, 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 the roof, which leaks profusely during the winter. And uh, so we put money into it each year to try and repair. But we, uh, Mr. Hawker and uh, Kurt Olson and I met on Friday. And, you know, with a roof problem, you really can't, you really have to tear it off and start to really find out what the, the problem is with that type of roof. It's, it's, there's a flat roof and there's a composition and nothing's worked. So, you know, it, it's just we're just putting more, more money against it. Yes. 
a, a companion question that we'll need to answer fairly soon. I mean, certainly before winter, um, is what do we do w with the building? And uh, that question doesn't need to be addressed tonight. We'll give you a report, um, pr possibly at the, at the next meeting we have. Um, but obviously, we wouldn't want to go into the winter if we intend to uh, use that house for uh, keep the house. On the other hand, I think the choice will be, um, you can start thinking about that, is that parcel was acquired to um, uh, expand our adjoining land holdings so that we could do a better development when the time came. And it may be time, rather than invest 10000 say, just guessing 10000 in a in a new roof, um, well, that's, that, that assumes that we would have to, that they have to change the slope on the roof. If they just re-roof it, maybe, I don't know, three or 4,000. Do we invest in, in a building that has a short life expectancy, um, or do we get rid of it? And again, that's not for tonight, but you need to think in terms of with no rent, we, we will be on the clock to make a decision whether we want to remove the building or not. Harry? Mr. Chair, it's just occurring to me now with all of this, and I have, uh, and I'll wait for other people to offer their opinion, but uh, not a problem with the lease or uh, the reduced pay payment extension. But if, if the roof is leaking, we need to figure that out before the end of six months, I and mean, we're going to be back into winter right. again. Yeah. And so. Like I said, at the next meeting would be a good tick -tock. time. TikTok, yeah. Or, or even before the next meeting. I mean, this is August, and well, then it's we're tonight. Waiting in another <laughs> six weeks. And Mr. Chair, oh, excuse yeah. me. I mean, another way of looking at that is the fact that if you've got a building that you really couldn't rent to anybody else, and you've got somebody willing to be in it for six months, it's better to have somebody in the building than have it sitting vacant. So, uh, you know, that's a that's a positive. So, Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd make a motion to approve this lease agreement, which would uh, extend the lease for a six months till the end of January and uh, with no rent. I'd second that. This is a voice or mm. roll call. Voice. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Thanks for your work, Mr. Stanley. Kurt, we're going to go across the approved <coughs> projects review. We were asked to uh, provide a list of the projects that, <clears throat> that you selected to move forward uh, so that you could see them one more time and, and as just the projects and not on that score sheet and all the arrows and this and that. And so he here, here they are, and if, um, if you'd like to discuss any of them or discuss from amongst you, that's fine. That whatever you'd like to do, it's, it's fine with us. But this is the projects that we think you uh, want to move forward. So it's the Keller Keel. Sewer, sewer project, <clears throat> the development of the 15th Street study, and that's a grant-funded grant project. Schooner Point construction, we got a letter today saying that we did not get that grant. The Marview project uh, on Anchor Avenue and Nelscott, uh, allocating funding for sidewalks, crosswalks, and accessibility. The new parking lot at 35th uh, and Highway 101 in the Nelscott area. Uh, sidewalks on the east side of the highway, if we can get a grant for that in the Nelscott area. The undergrounding of the utilities in the D Lake area. The new traffic signal at South First in the D Lake area. Property acquisition and economic development. Mr. Chair? Yes. Mr. Olson, uh, I don't know if it's my memory or uh, my age, but I don't recall traffic signal at South First Street ever having been mentioned before. We, what, we, we talked about it as part of the undergrounding. It's, it's the one right, it would be right there at the D River Wayside. 
that traffic signal is, is hanging by wires. Uh -huh. So if we're going to underground there, it makes sense to put in new tra new arms and new signal okay. there. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There it is. It's, it was it was on the list. I missed it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right. <coughs> Mr. Chair, St. Kurt, and I maybe misread it, but when ODOT was compiling information relative to the gap, you know, the mm -hmm. project yep. um, down into uh, the uh, Nelscott, the Nelscott strip area, were, were they offering or did they say that they might help build a parking lot there? On 35th? No. They didn't? No, and there wasn't any discussion about improving the parking lot, the existing parking lot on 32nd either. There was a parking lot somewhere, so it had to have been on the east side or something, maybe. Anyway, I'll try and find that. Okay. I don't have it here. I know there was some discussion about when the, the roadway gets vacated uh, be t by, between the Chinese restaurant and the the antique shop, that that there may be a portion of that that could be created into a parking lot, in that existing asphalt. That might have been what you were thinking. Mr. Chair? Uh, 35th is the one that's on the south end of the Nelscott Strip, right? That's correct. Now, when we had the discussions with ODOT, we talked about that little corner up there being paved as, and, and the parking uh, increased, as I remember. Uh, wasn't that right, Gary? Yeah, that's that's my memory, and maybe yeah. maybe we were talking uh, over each other about two different things and not realizing it. It was always my impression that it was sort of the, the urban renewal's contribution to that project when because of the loss of parking from the, reali re the realignment of the parking in the Nelscott Strip. We, we'd always talked about that as a project for the agency. Well, the ODOT agreed that that needed to be done, and they, they included that in there, in my recollection. Well, if I can, Mr. Yes. Chairman, there was a lot of discussion around all the parking, and, that, and 35th Street, or fifth, that parking area was heavy in discussion. Um, but I, I, quite honestly, never allotted it to ODOT. It wasn't a cost and isn't a cost of the project. They were um, tell. it seems to me, my, at least my recollection is that uh, – uh, since they were taking some of the parking off of the Nelscott Strip itself, that they were actually almost offering to pave that area up there, and that was going to be part of the uh, of the overall project. Well, the good took it. the good news, if it comes out that way, saves some money. But I, I wouldn't bank on it. Hmm. I, I, I'm happy to see it here. I, I, I certainly believe that there was discussion about because because of the. The offset from losing some parking is that this area will be paved, but they're anticipating that we will be doing it. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing that we were asked to do was to discuss or to bring up the uh, Marview project and talk a little bit about the history and how it got on the list because there was such a gap between the planning process and, um, and then this process where it was selected to move forward. <clears throat> The project is on Southwest Anchor Avenue between 32nd Street and 35th Street in the Nelscott area, right along the, the ocean there. It generally inc includes streetscape features, parking improvements, and traffic calming. <coughs> it, <coughs> it started back in 2006 when we had the charrette for Nelscott, and it was, it, it was identified as a project during that period of time. And it included not only the street, but also it included the stairway and the new beach access uh, at, the, at the end of the street. And those projects were done as a, as a separate project. And then we looked at it before we got into any conceptual design. We wanted to know whether or not we're going to be undergrounding, because there was a lot of talk about undergrounding on that street. And as you all know, the Urban Renewal Agency isn't able to underground uh, in that location and so by, by our plan. And so we went to the property owners and said, well, how badly do you want it? And they, they came back and said that they really did want it and they'd like, to, like us to move forward with the, with the local improvement district process. And that process is to do a study to determine exactly what it costs and how, when, and how it would be uh, implemented. And then they, the property owners voted on that. And it came right at the time when there was sort of the, the collapse was happening and there wasn't, um, there wasn't enough positive votes to move it forward. So 
we're, we decided to move forward on a, on a conceptual design that wouldn't that wouldn't uh, change the the overhead wires. <clears throat> so in 2009, we started some pre-design meetings with the the community, like we always do. Uh, had several meetings where we talked about the things they'd like to keep, the things they liked about the street, the things they'd like to change, and then we ch and then we hired a consultant to come in and just do a conceptual design because um, there were there's just a a lot of different interests on that street, and it became obvious that there may be there there may be a project there, but it was going to take some compromise and, and some work, and so we we didn't want to get we didn't want to start designing. We wanted to get to a some sort of a conceptual design to make sure that people uh, pe people were were going to be on board before we started spending a lot of money on design, and so that took place in 2009. And then this is what you see: the conceptual plan that the property owners. Uh, Pretty much unanimously agreed to. I think there was there were two or three people that didn't respond to any of the, the questions or surveys or phone calls, and maybe one or two that um, that couldn't find themselves supportive. So, uh, the, which is which is pretty good for us, for the this, this street and the and the project that you see there. So, this this was um, this is a bird's eye view. This is a, a artist's conception of the intersection at 32nd Street, looking south down down uh, Anchor Avenue. And then at 2010, in May of 2010, we brought it to the agency, showed the agency the concept, and, uh, and, and at that point, it, we, um, we placed the project in, in the queue, really waiting for funding. It was right at then we were doing, we were getting involved in the Ocean Lake uh, project on 15th Street. That was gonna be a big, big ticket item, and we were gonna need to wait a little while until we had funding for it. So. It, it had sat, and that's why you hadn't hadn't heard about it uh, until 2000, since 2010. So that's that's sort of a quick ran, a wrap up of the uh, the history. I think you have a little bit more information in your packet, but I'm glad to answer any questions if anyone has any. Chester, Mr. Chair, <coughs> Mr. Olson, I see red stamped brick in the street here, like we have Correct. on the highway down uh, down in Taft. And it's now covered with black from all the tires. Um, I would hope that we wouldn't pursue that same strategy here and end up with the same kind of product. The, uh, it's very difficult to we found to keep this the striping or the the paint on the on the on Highway 101. And it's not that the it's covered with black. It's it's it's, it's uh, studded tires. Take take the paint off. <clears throat> We have found on the side streets it holds up quite a bit better, but it's no different than uh, than uh, crosswalk markings. I mean, there's just a maintenance issue. So if it's an element that we add, it's it's there's a maintenance issue that needs to follow it. And i.e. continual painting. Yeah, yeah. It holds up really well until the the uh, uh, spikes come out on the the studded tires, and all of a sudden it's just got gone and. Right. Weeks. Right. Um, but we um, perhaps there are there are some other ideas, uh, but, but it's it's certainly it's it's certainly something that can be um, taken out of the project. I mean, it isn't really in the project yet, and we haven't started designing it. It's just a it was just an idea that you know back in when we were doing this project, we we were using that, and um, people people sort of like the idea that it. As a as a traffic calming device, because it just was different. It's like this thing in the middle of the road instead of being a pavement. So, well, I, I would agree. I would suggest a possible alternative would be the pavers that we use down at uh, Northwest Fifteenth Street. They're not red; but they're a different color. They're yeah, not the yeah. color of the yeah. Of we the road. did we did in on Fifteenth Street. We did a different design, so they look like uh, like say pavers, and we and we did a different color. Yeah. And that seems to be holding up, doesn't it? It does so far. Yeah, yeah. One one other observation: the lights on Northwest Fifteenth um, contribute, in my opinion, to light pollution. There's there are no there's no shades directing the light down towards the pavement. The light just goes 360, basically. So I would hope that that's not the case uh, on a future project that we would. Find some kind of light that, uh, that could avoid that light pollution. Yeah, I think that's an uh, that's an important observation. The 
there, there was certainly a trade-off between getting um, a lot of light there by those crosswalks. You're talking about the bollards. And, and we have gone back and placed um, little metal pieces along the street side to, to, to keep it, to make it less bright and left, left all the light being able to go to the back on the sidewalk. But uh, I agree, and there's, there's really no way to, to, to tone them down. So I think that, we'd, well, I, I know that that, would be, that will be something that we'll consider in the future is a different wattage. Um, it has to do with the ballast rather than the bulbs. Well, I, I'm less concerned with the wattage than I am with the shade. I, I would hope there'd be some kind of a, a physical barrier to keep that light from going up and out and keeping it directed yeah. down towards the well, street you know, the, the sidewalk. Those ballers did have those. We ordered them. They didn't come with them originally, and we put them in. It, it, it did no. It did, just did no good. It, it, there was it, there was just something about the the amount of light that, it, even though it, it shined down, but it shined down on the other metal surface, and so it was really bright. So it was acting like a mirror. Right. And so it was still really bright, even with the, um, the baffles that right. normally we've had success with. So. We tried to paint those baffles black, and that didn't work either. We, we did a lot of different things, and right now they've got little pieces of metal letting just a little bit of light out onto the street. And as you see, the, the, it, I think it's the, the glass has a prisms cut in it, you know, on the back of it, so it, any light that's in there just ends up being about the same. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, Kurt, have, uh, just recently uh, they had a representative from the Nell Scott neighborhood that came to the meeting and brought a, a an updated design that they had all gotten together and uh -huh. pretty much approved. Are most of those or all, all of those suggested changes involved incorporated in what we're looking at? Yeah, now? It, it's the same. It's the same design. Okay. Same picture. So they're comfortable with this now. Yeah. Good. Following up uh, on that, this is conceptual. Correct. Which sometimes when you move it into project ready could be different. It certainly could be. So it usually is. So the I guess the, the question and I would hope that the neighborhood association would be heavily involved um, in this um, as we move move through because um, this this appears to be what sold the agency, you know, these conceptual drawings and stuff. So much change from that would perhaps be different or make, make a difference to the agency and the neighborhood. And we ought to be aware of it early okay. if something jumps out. Um, I think you're right. I, the good news is that they do have a strong neighborhood association that will be working closely with us. And and, not, and so we'll be able to work more closely with it as an association instead of individual uh, property owners like we normally get to. But the d devil's always in the details. And uh, generally, they accept this design. When we start talking about their front yard, I'm sure there'll be some issues. And uh, we'll have to work our way through those. And sometimes you give up a little and you get a little. So. But we'll keep you posted on the on the. Mr. Chair, moves forward. Uh, four years on since the last uh, LID attempt. Is there any? There been any more talk about uh, uh, undergrounding again, from a neighborhood perspective? No. no. And there's no reason why costs have reduced significantly. That would, if that was the swaying, uh, and I assume it was. Uh, well, yeah, and it was, didn't you say it was 2008 and that was the beginning of the economic uh, downturn? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't, I, there hasn't been any talk that I've heard, so we haven't brought it back for them. Okay. So, <clears throat> we're here for it, really, tonight. Talk about is the. Uh, economic development tools that you've been hearing about. And the original urban renewal plan, as you know, the, the year 2000 development plan, the uh, economic development wasn't really identified as a project category. It was just considered to be one of the results that would happen if we, dis if we completed the projects. We did, however, uh, complete a business development guide that we that during the TAF process that we used for a number of years, and it actually we used it uh, in the Ocean Lake Act, too, because it has a lot of good information. It wasn't 
completely specific to TAF, but there was some good information in there that, that people were able to use for, uh, for a number of years. So we, and we completed that back in, in 2000. But it was during our substantial amendment process that uh, staff recommended that the agency, uh, uh, recommended and the agency approved adding a, a category called economic development to our plan so that we could target money when we saw an opportunity in economic development. Before we were sort of we sort of had this shoehorn sort of attitude. Well, if we can make it look like one of these projects, we can do it. But if it's just you know provide money for business expansion or something, we we couldn't do that sort of thing. So then we be, began meeting with a professional economic development people from around the state, getting ideas about what they what they do and what they'd like to what they do if they could do things that they've heard of. And then we took a number of those ideas and we took them and, and gave them to. Uh, to the Chamber of Commerce helped us, to business leaders, and we asked them for their feedback, and we did a survey, and this was one of the, one of the questions was, you know, do you own your property as well as your business? And so the, the feedback that you see comes from business owners where 60% of the business owners own the property as well. They seem, they obviously, they have a bigger stake in it, and they responded to the survey um, in, in larger numbers. The responses that we got were generally favorable, and really they were uh, kind of interesting as well, because you can see by this graph, when we asked the question, could these tools help you? And at the time, these were the ones that we were considering, and you can see that the blue um, is, is it's fairly high throughout it, generally yes, and the no is kind of you know, about the same, I would say. Well, when we asked the same question and we said, could, do you think these tools would be helpful to other businesses in town? <laughs> Everybody thought, oh, yeah, other businesses. I, I'm not sure I can use it, but I think they can, so that's a good idea. So I don't know what to take from that other than what you see there. So I, uh, I, I provide that for, for, your, for your pleasure there. But we continued to work on the options. We gathered a few more. We dropped some. We uh, took it to staff for review. We asked uh, our, our senior staff to, to look at the numbers or look at these plan pro programs. We went through and, and talked about them like I'll do here in a moment and asked them for their ideas. And you can see uh, the kind of the, uh, there's, there's some people liked and some people didn't. And there's a bunch of maybes in there. I suspect we'll, we'll get more of that as we uh, move it forward. <coughs> so I'll run through the options now for, um, for you to consider. And, and then, I'm, I'm, but I, any questions that you have, or any feedback that you want to give me about ideas for any of these, I, I stop me and, and, and I'll write them down and, or try to ask, answer your questions. You also have a sheet there at your desk, sort of a worksheet that you can uh, use if you like. Um, the, your, your chairman suggested that if you had that sheet that you may um, feel compelled to fill it out and get that information to me. If, I, if you do, we will look at the ones that, that say yes, and we'll think, well, those are the ones we should make, put more effort into developing a program around. The ones that say maybe, we probably will come back to you with more information. And the ones that say no, we won't worry about. We won't try to, we won't spend any more time working on them uh, for, for planning purposes. These aren't, aren't in any particular order. They are under uh, several headings, and one of them is sustainable businesses. So the first one would be to provide business expansion loans to uh, existing businesses that in some way want to expand their operation with the idea that it would create some opportunity for hiring new people. The mixed-use housing loans, that's an area that uh, is maybe new to, uh, to Lincoln City, but <clears throat> we probably have a few um, opportunities where second floors could be re rehabilitated into housing, into afford more for affordable housing was something that I had been involved with in the past, and it was a it was a big deal in a more traditional downtown where they had um, a lot of units above the ground floor retail that wasn't being used. Kurt, could I interrupt you just for a minute yeah, sure. for clarification? Um, these programs would only exist in urban renewal footprint. That's correct. Which, which is just the strip, you know, on either. Not, not uh, in reality, but almost the entire length of the community along 101. Yeah, it's generally Highway 101, but not every property on Highway 101, and it gets fatter in each of the historic business districts. And then uh, the third one on this slide would be energy efficiency, uh, energy efficiency loans for businesses that want to borrow money to do um, upgrades 
uh, to their business. One of the things that we heard over and over again, and even came back just as recently when we took this to the business development uh, committee for the chamber, is child care. They heard it. They, I heard it over and over again from business leaders. Is one of their biggest problems is child care for their employees, and. We don't know what kind of program this would be, but it could be uh, supporting an existing program, or it could be providing a space that could be used as a cooperative program. Maybe there's two or three people that are do trying to do daycare out of their homes, and if they had a really nice space where they could combine their efforts and, and use uh, a central location, uh, maybe that would be a way that we could work on uh, child care uh, opportunities. Internet commerce loans. There are probably some, still some businesses out there that are trying to do all of their marketing out of their storefront and haven't realized the opportunity that they uh, that might be available to them if they got into Internet sales. And so maybe they just need to take a couple of classes and get some uh, software to make that conversion. Gap funding. This would be used for pro programs where somebody was going to borrow some money from the bank. They had some money on their own, but in order to make it pencil out, they needed some a gap, uh, some funding there in the middle, and maybe the agency then could provide a program to uh, provide loans for for that. A downtown manager. This would be uh, an. It probably would. It could be someone that was hired to sort of work with businesses and the and the. Um, business, uh, well, like the uh, Bay Area Merchants or the Ocean Lake Merchants Association, could work directly with them, or maybe it's just uh, in, a, in a smaller area of, of town. Maybe it's uh, Nelscott and Taft or D Lake Nelscott and Taft, where the uh, agency perhaps could fund the program for a two-year period in order to see how it works, and then maybe if it's successful, then the business owners uh, may choose to then fund the program on their own by forming a business improvement district and, and tax themselves in order to fund that if they see uh, the benefit from it. <coughs> Another program may be a, a business operations review where we would hire someone to come in and, and do assessments uh, of uh, people's businesses. They'd say, you know, we'd like someone to come in, take a look at how we run our operation, talk to us about marketing, and there are those people that we've brought in in the past I think also the Lincoln County uh, Microenterprise Program does some of that more um, um, as uh, for startup businesses, I understand. But just contract with someone that could come in and help um, businesses with businesses with their questions and, and help them do a better job at what they do. Another idea was uh, to create a, a main, I call it a Main Street in initiative, and that would be offering grants. Uh, I'd put down here $10,000 grants to um, the merchant associations them to use in, in whatever way they think would best benefit their district. There's, they're always uh, coming to the agency with uh, requests for additional garbage cans or additional benches or uh, maybe they want to put it on a program. They go to the VCB to help put it on a program. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying that we just hand them the money and that they could do anything they want with it, but they'd come to the agency with, uh, with an idea and uh, if the agency supported that idea, then uh, the grants could be made to them, and then instead of uh, um, the agency being involved in that program, uh, maybe they they could then be involved in it themselves and, and carry it out. Business startup loans, that one will be a, that one will be a tricky one. Uh, some of these will be tricky, especially when you consider the um, what's what, what's the collateral that we would use for for these sorts of things. But um, it's something that that some cities do, and I threw it in the mix. Business incubator, business center, you've heard of us talk about those before. We uh, have an area down, downstairs where we have had some success and had and tried again to, to uh, use. And, and there, there's, it's one of the things that you hear a lot of that se several cities do. Uh, the difference in this one would be to create um, <clears throat> A business center as well. So there would be businesses that could cooperatively operate out of a out of a shared space, so that they they would be sharing the rent, they'd be sharing the, the utilities and the the phone and copy machine and, and maybe even uh, administrative assistance. Uh, but be, but creating a, a place where somebody that's in town for an extended period of time might be able to 
use it for uh, as, a, as their business center to be able to spend a couple more days in town or to be able to uh, entertain clients here while they're while they're in town <coughs> the next one uh, the welcome home entrepreneur program you've heard me talk about this one I've, I, I've kind of liked this one I, I don't think anybody's doing it it's kind of we thought of this one we talk here all the time especially those of us that have lived here and raised our kids here that if our kids have to leave uh, in order to have uh, opportunities and there's, there are examples of kids that have come back to town or have stayed here and started businesses, and, and maybe there's an opportunity that we could help any 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 student that, that uh, went to school here at, in, in Lincoln City. If they want to come back and start their business in Lincoln City, maybe we can provide them with some startup funding, membership to the chamber, uh, help them uh, make, pay, pay whatever cost associated with the Small Business Development Center to get them off on the right foot. So this is a program that I wanted to throw in the mix for your consideration as well. Prepayment of development fees. These, when, when a developer comes in and does a project, especially large, well, larger the project, the more the development fees are. <coughs> I understand the system development charges and why they're there. And, but, and, I, and I understand that we've sort of taken um, the approach that, that they aren't something that we want to forgive. But, but, we, but the reason that we charge them is because they're using up some of our capacity, for, for example, water, sewer, that sort of thing. But, they're, but, but they have to pay those fees the day they walk in the door the very first day, and they're not using any of those, those services. So maybe the Urban Renewal Agency could sort of float a loan to pay those system development fees uh, that, could, that can add up, just for a house they can add up to sub substantial dollars. So for a development, it's even higher. And maybe they could put that money into their development and so that, that they wouldn't have to come up with that funding until they get ready to either sell the building or get their certificate of occupancy or start leasing some of those spaces and start recouping some money. And then they, would, then they could come back and pay off those fees. That may help them be able to pencil out a project as well. The next one is the program that we currently have, business, business, building rehabilitation loans. The, the next one is building rehabilitation grants. And there was some talk about what if we were able to provide <coughs> some grants for certain projects. And those could be ones that we targeted. We, there, there maybe are some properties that we uh, could target and say, you know, we'd really like to have uh, some work done in this area and maybe provide some funding uh, either, either as partial grants or matching grants. Most of the projects that I've been involved with in the past have been matching grants, and they're pretty easy to administer. The project gets done. You know, you decide what you're going to fund. The project gets done. You look at the receipts, and you up to a certain amount. Um, then you just pay half of the cost. Kurt, could you back up for a minute sure. and, and talk about our existing program and how we could change that, and that's the building rehabilitation loan <coughs> and what, what we could do to maybe enhance that program? I've got uh, I've got another list of a few ideas, and I'm not sure I can hit them all. I think the main one that we've talked about is increasing the value, the loan value, from fifty thousand dollars to something higher. We we started out at seventy five thousand dollars. We dropped it to fifty thousand dollars during a period of time when there was some discussion about when a public agency puts money in a project, then it becomes a, a prevailing wage project and so that there's an additional cost to developers so if we stayed under the 50 it didn't fall on that threshold that's been resolved now so we can go back to $75,000 we could go up to $100,000 or we could we could not cap it and you could decide I mean we could do a really incredible project if it was something that the agency was highly supportive of so what what kind of limitations are on what kind of projects currently Currently, we can, you can, we can, we're, this program is designed to only work on existing commercial buildings within the district. But any part of those buildings? Well, it, we've said it, the idea, the goal of the project is, is a facade improvement. And we've said that you can do, you can't borrow the money to put on a new roof. But if you do a facade improvement, you can put on a new roof. Or if you're going to, you can't borrow the money to, uh, change out all of the understructure, the dry rot under your building. But if you're going to do a facade improvement, you can because we understand the value that we don't want to put money 
into a facade, a, a rotten facade. So that was how that was the limitations that we had set. At one time, we did do in the Taft area. We did a two-year program where we allowed them to also use it for sign change outs, and we wanted to see. It. We did, we didn't want it. We wanted to get it as many signs changed out as we could in the shortest period of time. So we included it in this program, and we we did it for a two-year program. How effective was that? Uh, not too bad. We we had several that were done. It wasn't like I had hoped, but at the same time, we didn't have a clear and concise sign program for what, what kind of design that we were looking for. So we were mostly changing out um, um, de de deteriorated signs that had rusted and, and that sort of thing. And, and we got a few a few signs that were. Um, more compatible with what we were looking for. We were looking for something that was more of a monument sign on the ground rather than up on a post lit. And, then we, and we got a few of those. So uh, then we go to the bottom, the lease subsidy program. Again, if a building is uh, a, a proper, a business wants to start a business or expand a business, uh, maybe there's a way that we can help with uh, subsidizing uh, on, a, in, on a lease. And the, the, um, I'll skip the, the next one and go down to this one, the vacant space leasing, because it's a similar one. This, it's similar in that we would identify certain properties and say, you know, we're, these, are, these are key spa spaces. They're on, they're on Highway 101 or they're at the 100% corner, and we just don't want them to be habitually vacant. And so what can we do to, to help get those, those, those um, rented? And there are some ideas that are being used in different cities where they – uh, we'll waive some of the f initial fees, not charge uh, system development charges, um, or um, help when, it, when if there's some tenant improvements that need to be done, uh, waive the building fees, building department fees, or, or help pay for those. And then uh, the one above that, the sign change out grant. This again, be, per, maybe we can provide a, a matching grant for to to uh, change out the the types of signs that we. Um, would rather not see with some that we would rather see. But this would have to go along with some sort of a program to, to, to determine what it is exactly we would like to see. And we've always said during all of our planning processes that we never intended Taft to look like Ocean Lake or D Lake to look like Nell Scott. They all have their own little character and they should all be a little bit uh, different if they want. And so that the, these types of these, these programs would probably be only in the historic business districts. It doesn't really matter what happens between Nell Scott and D Lake as far as signage as much. It's what's happening on Highway 101 in that historic business corridor, and and maybe uh, working with the seven businesses in Nell Scott, they could come up with a with an idea of what kind of blade signs that they want. Or, or there are some other ideas about signage that that. Um, you may be in a better marketing position if you put what you are, not who you are. And there's some businesses that have really great names, but you have no idea what they sell. And if they just said cafe, you'd know, hey, that's what I'm looking for. I'm driving through town. I'm really looking for a cafe, and I'm reading your sign, but I'm not sure what it says. The infrastructure partners, again, that is something that we sort of do now. If, we're, if we've got a, a project, if somebody wants to do a development project, Urban renewal is able to bring in the water and sewer and sidewalks and those sorts of things if it's necessary. So I threw it in there because we're already sort of doing it. The next category of program support, these would be these would be grants and funding that we do that's similar to what the uh, VCB does. They ha would have a bucket of money and and be able to help uh, existing programs. And I think the one thing that we'd want to make sure doesn't happen is that that our money wouldn't be used, substituted for their money, but it would enhance their program, it would make their program better. So there are some small business and development center opportunities that maybe could uh, be enhanced with, with funding uh, from the agency. And then, uh, again, uh, the uh, local programs, oh, I'm sorry, that's the local program support. And then the workforce education uh, grants to, there are, uh, there seems to be a need, and there's been some um, work done by the city to help uh, businesses train their workers. And it may be 
something as simple as being able to send a worker to uh, an, an asbestos abatement class and all of a sudden that contractor is now certified to do asbestos work where they weren't before but um, a, a grant to be able to send uh, one of their one of their people to a class someplace I think the last one on here is uh, tourism we talk all the time about uh, visitor attractions and and so so far our our the two that I consider to be our two of our best are the glass foundry and the culinary center and they're ones that the city provided if there was somebody that came to town and wanted to create an attraction that would rival that maybe there's a way that we could help support that through a, through a loan program or, uh, or or one of our other um, things that you saw tonight so there is a quick and dirty of the 22 ideas for you to consider um, you have that sheet at your at your desk, and, and if you would like to, um, to, to, you know, over the next week or so, go through that list. And if you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer them and um, get them back to us. We'll come back to you at the next meeting and, and tell you what we heard and find out what you would like to do moving forward. Any questions? Yes, sir. Oh, only after the meeting. Go ahead. Oh, I was uh, going to ask Kurt. Would it be fair for us to ask you where you thought you could get the most bang for the buck relative to these questions you're asking us? I don't think there's anything on here that I couldn't support. I think that if, if you made a bold statement, I, and I don't think there's anything on there that there's going to be a line out the door of people wanting to use. So if each one of those had one or two people, businesses, that would be great. I think that you would make a bold statement and you would read about it in the Oregonian if you approved all 22 of them and said, we're serious about economic development in Lincoln City and this is our new program. We would be the only city that's doing anything like this. But that's maybe not realistic. Mr. Chairman? Could, um, sometimes when we are, and I'm going on memory, so we, I'm asking for help, um, I'm recalling we've allocated a million dollars towards economic development from our previous. You've spoken at times where uh, loan programs, some loan programs, the funds could stay beyond the sunset of urban renewal. Correct. Would all these, conceivably, could the million dollars um, under economic development, under this umbrella, um, stay with us for ever or or does something other than the grants obviously wouldn't be paid back but I, I guess I'm, I'm looking to uh, some of these things are going to take a lot longer to develop than right. the agency is going to exist so I'm mentally saying why bother um, would rather target those that have long life or potential long life can you help me with that clarification sure Funding-wise, in, in this current budget, we have $700,000, $300,000 in our capital general fund, and $400,000 in our loan program. And I, I, anticipating that there would be some projects that we would do as some of these programs we would do as loan programs, and that could be that could be out of our loan program that we could do that. And the ones that we're maybe we would be used doing as grants would come out of our just our general fund budget and so the million dollars that you were referring to we that's the money that was in is it is in our general fund that there's still all that money in our other fund that we can use as well and yes anything that we anything that we do in either fund that is a loan that gets paid back would all go back into this into that bucket of money and it could then continue to be used after urban renewal sunsets in 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 the program that we currently have in any of these programs or quite frankly any other program that you the city decides to use that money for but it would have to be a loan so so some of the grant programs obviously would go away because yeah. they mm -hmm. no funding uh, some of the the other things so again to answer my question loan programs would have longer longevity yes. than any of the others otherwise we're looking at till sunset. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you. Chester? Kurt, I look at uh, our list of 22 potential profits here, and I see nine loan programs, and I see 11 grant programs. Okay. That's basically what we've got. We've got loan programs and grant programs. And in the years that I've been sitting on this agency, I have yet to see businesses clamoring for our help or our advice or our assistance or anything else. Am I missing that? Have you experienced that? People come into the office uh, looking, for, uh, looking for assistance from you and the, and the agency and the department? It's not very often. You're correct. I, I, I get the feeling that we're trying to push people into making their businesses better, and they're really not interested. I'm not sure how to answer that question. So well, it wasn't a question. That's, that's just <laughs> my feeling. The, the other way to look at this, um, a lot of these are helping them do what they may want to do. And the other way of looking at some of these is doing what they can't do. Um, child care, um, an individual business really can't do that. And most individual businesses can't do that. A downtown manager can't, uh, individual business can't do that. So some of these are things that they can't do. I just think there's a there's a difference there between helping them do what they may want to do through a loan or a grant versus um, some resource that that they as an individual business can't do. Agreed. What else? Thank you, Kurt. Okay. Next order of business, comments from agency members. Do we have any comments from agency members? Anyone want to make any comments? Mr. Chairman, I guess I have just clarification. Our assignment then is to go through this list and get it back to the staff in a week. A week, please. Less of the week. Okay. It's also on your laptop, so you can also email it to them. So do it that way. Thank you. Any other comments? This meeting is adjourned. Yeah, it's all yours. <coughs> Here's to spare. Thanks, Kurt. Yeah.